Come back to some pandemic coverage. The picture in the United States this morning, a country which is now again being hit hard by COVID-19. The U.S. is counting 2,000 deaths a day. It has not seen a number that high since September. And here's another key figure in the U.S. Just 67% of the eligible population has been vaccinated. There's still considerable resistance to getting the shot. Magda Gabrasalasa is in Washington for us this morning with more on the U.S. situation and particularly the attitude toward vaccines. Good morning, Magda. Good morning, Heather. Uh, as you know, there continues to be a lot of pushback when it comes to getting the vaccines in this country. A lot of rallies, uh, anti-vaccine mandate rallies that have taken place uh, in this country, including uh, one on Sunday in D.C. where thousands of people attended. So even though about 67 percent of the population that is eligible have, have received their shots, many others uh, refusing to do so, including a man in Boston whose life really is uh, on, uh, on the line right now. So DJ Ferguson is in need of a heart transplant, but he's actually been taken off the transplant list because he's not vaccinated. Now here is his father explaining his son's stance. His son is going to the edge of death to stick to his guns. It's kind of against his basic principles. He doesn't really believe in it. Now, the family is hoping that maybe they could move him to another hospital, but this is a requirement that uh, uh, many hospitals have in place, that uh, patients need to be vaccinated, as well as having other uh, requirements in order to get a transplant. And there's many reasons why. Here's Dr. Arthur Kaplan, who is the head of medical ethics at NYU's School of Medicine, explaining why. Cold could kill you. COVID could kill you. The organs are scarce. We're not going to distribute them to someone who has a very poor chance of living when others who are vaccinated have a much better chance post-surgery of surviving. What a story, Magda, and how clearly it illustrates the kinds of debates and situations that are arising in the U.S. What about the hospital itself? What does it say? Well, Brigham and Women's Hospital makes the point that there are 100,000 people waiting for transplants to save their lives. And of course, there's a shortage of organs. So it says the COVID-19 vaccine is one of many vaccines and lifestyle beh behaviors required for transplant candidates. And they say it is all about improving the odds for a successful operation and the patient's survival. Now, Ferguson may not be completely out of options. It is possible for him to get a mechanical pump instead of a transplant. So we'll have to wait to see if that actually ends up happening. And Heather, that is a surgery that does not require him to be vaccinated. Magda, thank you for this. Magda Gabrasalase, she's in Washington this morning.